Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really looking forward to having an exciting discussion, but uh, we'll give everybody a few minutes to start logging in while you're doing that. Feel free to put in the chat maybe where you're calling from. Um, I am personally am calling from Idaho, just outside of Boise. Uh, so there is a, a chat functionality and uh, a Q&A as well. I'm also really excited um, to partner with APS Payroll today so we can discuss volunteer management and how to recruit and retain volunteers. Few more housekeeping items before we jump in. This session will be recorded and we'll send out a copy of that recording so you guys can refer back to it. Um, or we do encourage you to share it with any of your colleagues or teammates that maybe weren't able to attend the live session today. Also, as I mentioned, if you do have any questions, there is a Q&A feature that you can put your questions into. We will um, check that periodically or, or have a good stopping point to answer everybody's questions. And then also uh, at the end of the presentation, there's going to be a contact information slide so you guys can reach out to Verified First or APS Payroll with any questions that you might have. So with that, I think we'll uh, maybe go ahead and get started here. Here's what's on the list for our agenda today. Um, we'll, do, we'll do some formal introductions and overviews of, of our organizations. And then we'll dive into talking about recruiting volunteers, how background screening, there's some best practices in that recruitment process. Then we wanna talk about after you recruit the volunteers, how can you retain them? And then we'll do um, a live integration demo of both of our platforms together. All right, so I'll kick it off. My name is Stephanie Komnick. I'm the partner manager supervisor here at Verified First, but I also manage the partnership that we have with APS Payroll. I've been at Verified First for five years and started in our account management team. So I have a pretty good amount of knowledge on our products, uh, our services, uh, the functionalities in our ordering portal, as well as having some experience with working some of our nonprofit clients and, and clients that um, have some volunteers that they need to do recruitment for in addition to their staff. And I also have here with me Scott Lassane from APS Payroll. Scott, go ahead. I'll pass it to you to introduce yourself. Thanks, Stephanie. My name is Scott Lassane. I'm the Vice President of Sales at APS. And I've been with APS for around 16 years, and I've brought on countless churches, nonprofit organizations, and organizations that utilize volunteers. So I'm very excited to speak to this topic today. Awesome. All right. So quick little overview about uh, Verified First. We're a fast-growing tech company, and really our mission is to deliver some cutting-edge HR technology that's going to help transform the way your organization protect their people. And we do this really in a variety of ways. So whether it's through background checks, drug screening, employment education verifications, I-9 and E-Verify, all things that, that may be needed in that pre-hiring process, we are definitely happy to help you out with. So you might be thinking, how is a background screening company going to help me recruit and retain volunteers? Well, we have close to around 10,000 clients, and around a third of them are nonprofit organizations and churches like yourselves. We've also done several webinars similar to this one, where we partner with other companies who are experts in the volunteer world, which has really helped us to better understand the needs and importance of volunteers and volunteer management. And we've come together today with APS Payroll because they are a partner of ours who also has a big focus on churches and nonprofits. And together, we really just want to provide the easiest and most efficient way to be able to effectively screen not only your employees, but volunteers as well, all from within APS's robust platform. So, Scott, I'd love for you to share a little bit about APS Payroll. Absolutely. Thanks, Stephanie. So, in summary, we aim to make payroll and HR easier. And there are two pillars of our value proposition. One, intuitive technology, uh, and then pair that with industry-leading and customer-centric support. So our clients are empowered to focus on what they do best by handling what we do best. And our tech solution really encompasses the entire life cycle, from recruiting, onboarding, time, benefits, performance, payroll, et cetera. And we really play that partner in helping our clients manage their workforce. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, let's dive right into uh, volunteer recruitment. And Scott, we'll let you continue on. Absolutely. 
So recruitment in general can be very competitive, especially for organizations with tight budgets. Think of our churches and our nonprofit clients. However, volunteer recruitment can especially be challenging due to lack of awareness of opportunities, organizational resource constraints, and compliance and safety issues that arise. So this is where having an HR platform or an HCM that offers applicant tracking can be a valuable tool for nonprofits, churches, and healthcare organizations to recruit volunteers. So an HR system can streamline volunteer recruitment with automatic postings of opportunities to job boards and social media platforms at no additional cost, making it easier to cast a wider net and attract the right candidates. So centralized visibility in a single system ensures hiring compliance and it simplifies recruiting regardless of who's involved. So furthermore, you can configure user permissions based on who needs access to certain information. And the best part is that of an HR platform like APS is we make it easy to manage volunteers in one system without an additional cost. At APS, we charge our clients per compensated employee each month. There's no need to pay volunteers just because they their records are in our system. So you won't incur any fees with APS to manage them within our application. What an awesome benefit that is. That's correct. Now, I've worked with many clients over the years that work with volunteers. And, and during that time, I've noticed that there are a few best practices they follow to really create a streamlined volunteer recruitment process. And the first is to create hiring paths that are specific to volunteers. I often see our church and nonprofit clients using a different hiring journey for those who are going down the volunteer path. And as you can see uh, in the example on the slide, the recruitment process might focus more on a volunteer's passion and, and availability rather than specific professional skills or experiences. And our next tip is to leverage automation to really streamline volunteer recruiting. Um, uh, ATS platforms like uh, our offering uh, really offers valuable tools that save organizations time and decrease what we call time to fill for essential volunteer roles that, that might come up sporadically. It's a great example uh, of this is, is the ability to have an ATS automatically schedule interviews with qualified candidates that meet a certain criteria. And lastly, utilizing integrated communication tools are a great way to keep potential volunteers engaged throughout the recruitment process. Uh, with our system, you can schedule interviews, send text reminders, and even ask for feedback uh, on the process. And this can help keep potential volunteers engaged and informed, which can increase their interest and commitment to your organization. Those are really some uh, good best practices, Scott. Thanks for sharing with that. So what about the onboarding process for volunteers? Are there any best practices you have there? Absolutely. It's just as important to streamline your onboarding process so that volunteers feel welcome and happy to dedicate their time for your mission. And the first tip I'd like to share is to create, just like with the hiring path on the recruitment side, create a volunteer-specific onboarding path. Taking the same step you took when bringing those employees through the uh, those volunteers through the door, and once they are quote-unquote hired, they can receive the correct checklist and paperwork for a smoother onboarding experience. If you look at the visual on the very right hand side of the screen, you can see that there are different onboarding packets or checklists for a W-2 employee versus a contractor or a volunteer. Now the next best practice is to automate the onboarding communication, just like you would on the recruitment side. So you can send welcome emails with checklists, necessary paperwork, reminder, and expectations to your volunteers so that when it comes down for their first day, they're ready. And finally, you can streamline your workflows even further with the automatic creation of volunteer records in an HR platform like APS. So this ensures you have accurate information and continue proactive, proactive communication with your volunteers. So once you've chosen a volunteer, their records created, which makes it easier to track their hours and manage their information all in one location. And you're not siloing that within some separate database that wasn't meant for what you're trying to accomplish. 
Absolutely. Really great stuff there. I, th I think that was super helpful to really see how essentially you can do the same process for volunteers and employees, all while using the same platform. If anyone has any questions about the functionality of the APS system, please feel free to put that in the Q&A and we'll pause a little bit later to answer some of those questions. Now, as part of the recruitment and onboarding process for volunteers, background screening is a crucial part. However, with so many searches out there, it might actually be a little bit overwhelming to know if you should conduct a background check differently for volunteers and which screens are best for them. So let's first look at the why when it comes to background screening. The first thing that we recommend is knowing and understanding why a background check is important. Not only does it give you insights into a person's history that's gonna help you determine if they're a, the right person to volunteer, but it's going to protect the vulnerable, protect other volunteers that they may be working with, and protect the church or the organization that they're uh, raising their hand to serve for. So having these things in mind will help maintain organizational integrity and reputation. All of these things are, are all of these are things that you can tell your potential volunteers, especially if they have concerns about having a background check conducted on them. And also reminding them that the background checks are confidential and it's just a standard process for your organization is a really good thing to communicate to them as well. Scott, anything you'd like to add here? Yes, yeah, Stephanie, I'm a huge fan of consistency and, and I view it as a prioritized best practice, especially concerning compliance with volunteers that are embedded within the organization and who the organization serves. So you're, you're, uh, word on the screen, regular really resonates with me. Regular means consistent, be transparent, and be consistent with your practice. Absolutely. Yep. Couldn't agree more there. So now that we know just a little bit uh, better why background screening is important, the next step is to create a policy. So not only do your volunteers know the expectations, but others in your organization are familiar with it and can speak to that process as well. This will help keep things clear and consistent, which is just exactly what you touched on, Scott. So years ago, there was actually very little information or news about abuse or violence happening within nonprofit organizations and churches. However, sadly, over the past few decades, there has been an increasingly and alarming uh, trends of abuse and violence. Now, many organizations are looking for ways to protect their community members all reasonable steps must be taken to ensure the safety of your people and property. A background check process can be uh, an important tool to provide that protection. So first, let's talk about who to run a background check on. We recommend that background checks be conducted on all volunteer staff, but at a minimum, they should be ran on those who are working with the vulnerable population, such as children, elderly, or those with special needs. And similarly, if someone is going to be handling donation money, you might want to have an additional search, such as say a credit check done on them. Or if someone's volunteering at a hospital, maybe have them take a drug test since they're gonna have access to various medications. So you can kind of provide that baseline uh, background check and then add on some additional services depending on the volunteer role that they are looking for. And that's really going to help with consistency being key in your screening policy and you being transparent with your volunteers so that they really do understand that this is a standard process meant to protect them, other volunteers, and the organization. So then once you've decided who you'll need to run the background check on, then usually the next question is when. So probably the most obvious time is before they volunteer to serve or if you hire somebody um, as a member of staff. It's also especially important to do it before major seasons. So maybe before vacation Bible school, if you're a church or a holiday season where you're gonna really need uh, to increase the number of volunteers. Uh, some additional times when it might be good to screen is when someone has a title or responsibility change. So maybe they volunteered for one position and now they wanna volunteer for something else might be a good time to do another background check. Maybe uh, if there's a change in the venue, so depending on where you're going to need those volunteers to go, if they're going to have um, the access or be surrounding some other types of individuals, you might want to consider doing a background check at that point. And then also a really big uh, opportunity to do a background check is when there's been a significant amount of time 
we usually refer to that as rescreening. So that could be uh, maybe an annual basis every few years. I've heard some organizations do it every six months, just so they're kind of closing the gap on, on missing some potentially uh, some potential information. And definitely make sure that if you're going to have some type of rescreening policy or other times to run a background check other than when they first serve, including that in your background screening policy as well. So continuing on with how to screen, I'm actually going to jump to number two because we, we covered number one in the previous slides. Once you know who, the next step is to actually build out your packages. So it's super useful to have packages created so you can be sure that you're ordering the correct searches on that individual. And then you can define if there's any rules or expectation. So that goes back to the first point of adding some additional services depending on the position that they're volunteering for. Number four is abiding by the Federal Consumer Reporting Agency regulations, or it's often known as the FCRA. These are things like providing the applicant or volunteer with the correct forms that are needed in order to conduct a background check on them. Scott is going to drop a link in the chat for you guys that's going to talk about these forms a little bit further and how you can use a background screening platform to send all of these documents to your applicants for a more streamlined process. So this leads me to uh, integrating your volunteer recruitment or management platform as listed in step five. We all know that you're uh, involved with so many different areas in your organization, and it's not just background screening that you're responsible for. So having an integrated solution that provides you an easy process is really going to help your role. And if you haven't figured it out by now, our screening platform does integrate with APS Payroll, and we'll show you how that looks in just a little bit. And finally, once you have the results back, deciding if they're a good fit will be the last step. So this goes back to your background screening policy and possibly needing to consult legal counsel on how to determine if this individual should move forward in the process or not. So uh, great, Stephanie. So it's it's really nice to see the process that's laid out, and hopefully it's it's helpful to those that might either be new to this responsibility of background screening. Uh, for both staff and volunteers. And I, I apologize, Stephanie. I was trying to figure out how to put that message in the chat. So, Oh, that's uh, okay. <laughs> no uh, problem. You, you've laid it out so well. And I get it goes back to what you mentioned earlier, um, being consistent, having your best practices and your policies, and then communicating that so that volunteers and staff know this is your norm. This isn't something special just for them. Exactly. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is make anyone feel kind of singled out or discriminated against, like making them feel like it's just a background check for them. So yeah, being very open and clear about this is the standard process. We don't want to have to turn anybody away from volunteering because we have also heard that it's actually very hard to get volunteers into the door. Um, and so just, yeah, being very clear and consistent with the policy, um, I think will help me people actually feel a little bit better about it. So, yeah. All right. So we do have a few more tips that uh, we'd like to share with you to help safeguard your organization. And so really what it's about is taking the time to get to know your volunteers. So you can do this not only through background checks, but you can also even ask them why they chose to volunteer. You can also conduct a, a personal reference check. So you're not looking at someone's possible criminal history, but you want to get some personal references to really just see about that person's character. So all of these things will help with the overall vetting process for your volunteers. Even though there's going to be an element of human connection, probably uh, this is a little bit tougher, but really trying to put your feelings aside and not making the background check a personal process will help with finding the best suited volunteers. Now, and if that person isn't the best fit, it's okay to tell them, no, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to volunteer, which I get is probably a, a tough conversation. But again, you're looking to, to protect everybody involved and making sure you're really finding the best suited people. Some other best practices you can do is have the volunteer go through a training program by watching videos, filling out some additional forms. Some organizations even have cameras um, in their buildings. It really just provides another level of safety as well. 
Also, learning about your state and local laws regarding background screening can help ensure that you're staying compliant, because the last thing that anybody wants is to be in a courtroom over not taking their due diligence step of running the background check. And then lastly, really the goal is to be proactive and not reactive. So again, you're not finding out something after the fact and then, you know, having your name splashed out there uh, in, a, in a negative manner versus really promoting your organization. Scott, have you by chance heard of any other tips from your clients that work with volunteers? I think it's a reminder to, to define your routines for ongoing screening. So the, what I hear mostly is, hey, I know that I need to screen when I bring them on, but volunteers can be sporadically used. You mentioned uh, something earlier, Stephanie, uh, screening around the VBS season. And that's something that at, at my church is that's a, a routine for us. So every year I volunteer to go to youth camp and I get that 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 email, you know, two months before to rescreen. And that's our church's policy is to have certain, I don't want to say trigger events, but your high volume volunteer time and rescreen at that time to ensure that nothing has happened because something uh, may have happened since you know last year's youth camp. So um, you, you've mentioned it, Stephanie, but it's just breaking the assumption that we only screen when we onboard. Mm -hmm. We should screen consistently or um, annually using your rescreening term uh, right. just to make sure that you're protecting Again, who these volunteers are there to serve, which is the, the members of the organization and those that they they outreach to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I, I feel we all want to be trusting, um, but unfortunately, even the people that you feel like you trust, um, they have some things that they obviously want to keep to themselves, um, and so. Yeah. Uh, you gotta, you gotta really try and just make sure that, that, yeah, you're being consistent with everybody. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, just screen them, even though you feel like, you know, who they are as an individual, because everybody does make mistakes as well. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier as well, um, that there's some additional screens that you can consider, um, can doing, especially with your volunteers. So, you can do a criminal background check, which will include searches such as the uh, nationwide criminal database. You can do county criminal searches and a social security address trace. So while all these types of searches are a really good start, the one thing to keep in mind is that there is not one search that is going to cover everything. So you're going to need to determine what screens will be um, the best fit for each of those volunteer positions. A drug test and verification, such as employment and personal references, are other common add-on searches to those criminal searches that I just mentioned. These can help you provide a more well-rounded picture of the applicant or volunteer, especially if they don't have a criminal record. And then there's also a few other searches that are especially important to consider when your volunteers are working with the youth and vulnerable populations. And so one of them is the sex offender registry. And so what is a sex offender, kind of legally speaking, that is a person who was convicted of a sex offense. The act divides sex offenders into three tiers, depending on the nature and severity of the crime of conviction. Sex offender registries in each state allow for the tracking and monitoring of sex offenders following their release back into the community. And it's maintained by the Department of Justice, the National Sex Offender Public website, is the only search available to check on all individual states. And it has the most up-to-date on the individuals who are registered sex offenders, whereas going to a database that may have some records related to a sex offender are not updated as consistently and frequently. So there's often a lot of confusion with clients that they're going to like a, a nationwide database thinking that it'll catch um, anybody that had a, a sexually offended crime against them. And it, they may very well do that, but it could be something from six months ago. And um, if a state or a county is not consistently reporting that information to the database, it could get missed. So going directly to that National Sex Offender Public website is going to give you up-to-date information if someone is actively on the list or not. 
So best practice is for all the uh, organizations and industries to, to go to that registry and not just rely on the database itself when looking to hire an employee or a volunteer. And another search is called um, abuse registries. So abuse registries are created and maintained by each individual state. And these will track any violations for people who deal with vulnerable populations, such as children and the elderly. As with many facets of background screening, abuse registry searches vary from state to state. So for example, the information um, contained the length of time the information is held, and the requirement to run an abuse registry search can differ from state to state. In Pennsylvania, a child abuse clearance is required in order to work and or provide services to children, but that not might not be the same law, you know, for let's say Illinois. Um, and so, well, each state is going to be maintaining these registries, it's very important to know uh, the kind of different laws and regulations around that. In some states, there's multiple registries that document possible histories of abuse and neglect. So a vulnerable abuse registry check is a statewide report, and it's going to pull abuse and neglect records from a centralized database for the vulnerable groups. But again, each of those states are taking action on that. And it's going to allow the um, employee or volunteer manager, manager to determine if that candidate has a history of abuse or neglect. So really, this search combined with a greater background screening uh, search is going to help ensure that individuals can provide a safe experience for those vulnerable populations. It really does go beyond that criminal history where the person um, was convicted of a crime versus somebody that um, you know has done some other things that may not be at like a, a courthouse. It's really just gonna help you give that broader picture on that individual's character. So now that we've discussed how to recruit the volunteers and how to screen them efficiently, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how to retain your volunteers. Scott, I'm gonna go ahead and kick this one back over to you. Thanks, Steph. Uh, an HR platform can be a valuable tool to aid organizations in both recruiting, but now retaining volunteers. First, they can foster communication with volunteers so that your volunteers feel connected and valued. A great way to achieve this is with the self-service app, which can be used to communicate important information to volunteers and staff. Organizations can communicate opportunities, news, and events in a timely manner so that everyone in the organization is in the loop. Another area of volunteer management is tracking hours that they work to the appropriate grants and funds for accurate reporting. Uh, pretty common to not pay volunteers, but at the same time, um, if those projects or tasks that they're volunteering for have associated funding, funding can be lost, which could lead to volunteer loss. Furthermore, tracking those hours showcases the tangible impact of a volunteer's work, reinforcing their core importance to your organization's mission. Another way an HR system can help retain volunteers is through skill tracking and development. This isn't commonly discussed, but it's very important. So by providing volunteers with opportunities for professional and personal development via a learning management system, you ensure they're engaged in roles that match their interests and help them progress as individuals. This leads to higher volunteer satisfaction and retention. And lastly, nonprofits, churches, and healthcare organizations can conduct performance reviews to gather feedback about their volunteers' experiences and proactively address any concerns that they may have. It's, it's very important to ensure you act on the feedback you receive to improve your volunteer experience, your strategies, and create a more supportive environment, which ultimately leads to increased volunteer retention. I love that part about getting the feedback from the volunteers, because I think sometimes people go, why did we not get people to raise their hand or why are they not coming back to continually volunteer and not asking the volunteer themselves? Why did you not want to come back? So I, I think that's a really great piece to call out there. Absolutely. I think it goes along with the fact that that reviews aren't a one way street. Um, mm -hmm. Reviews solicit feedback and give feedback. And that's the beauty of having 
volunteers managed in the same system that you would manage your W-2 staff in. Yeah, definitely. So we've heard from many of our clients that self-service is, uh, is a tool that's very effective for both staff and volunteer management and retention. As you can see in our example on screen, employee self-service can help streamline communication with access to a company newsfeed. Uh, volunteers can also easily log their hours to ensure accurate tracking of time to grants or funds or projects. Uh, the centralized view really gives them easy access to not only that information, but documents and resources like an organizational chart. Uh, volunteers can even access the learning management system for any required courses or training to complete. So as you can see, Self-service tools are a great way to provide a seamless experience for volunteers to support their engagement and retention at your at your company. Anything that you like to add, Steph? Um, nothing really else comes to mind except I guess that I never really thought of how much overlap there could be between employees and volunteers, not even for the the person doing the hiring or recruiting. Um, but also from the the user experience that, yeah, everybody can kind of go through the same journey, which is really going to be great in the fact they are going through the same journey. If if changes need to be made in that process, you're not having to make a couple different changes depending on if it's a volunteer or staff. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I think I think that's really great to just kind of call out that there's still a lot of work, even if it's a volunteer versus an, an employee. Yeah. Um, and I bless all you guys for going through all of that. Um, but it's, de it's definitely nice to see that there is some overlaps there as well. Yeah. I mean, companies like APS, we're workforce management providers and the workforce is way more than, than, than the W2 staff. Mm -hmm. It's very common to have volunteers, contract labor, uh, those that are working with an agency, but still need to use the HCM to you know, clock in. So mm -hmm. we've, um, uh, when we built our technology, we wanted it to be flexible and to handle, um, anomalies or outliers. And one way that we've really been able to excel is by centralizing process management for volunteers. Yeah. And that is, I think, a great segue into automating uh, the tech stack that you're you're using. So I hope that we have educated you a bit on the importance of implementing a comprehensive recruitment and onboarding process for your volunteers. So we want to move into a little bit more of how you can automate your tech stack. Um, not only is this going to help with like the background screening process, since that is like a small piece of the overall uh, onboarding, but um, really just kind of talking about how automating the tech stack can, and can help from that process start to finish. So not sure if anybody really realized this, but um, we've done some research with a, a lady called Madeline Lorano. She's the founder of Aptitude Research. And she um, helped us find out that one in three companies are using 10 or more different recruiting solutions. And this can be, you know, for volunteers, employees, it just basically painting the picture that there's a lot of different platforms that organizations are using to, to find the right individuals. And Scott, I'm sure this actually isn't a big surprise for you, given that you're talking to organizations all day about their recruitment needs. They're, they're trying to cast a wide net. They're trying to use a uh, multitude of different systems to find the best candidates. And they're also using different systems to manage the workforce. And we've uh, done some research as well. And I'll talk about this in a little bit more depth in a later slide. But we've seen that, that research shows that post-pandemic, the number of systems that, that companies are using to manage workforce data has doubled. So it's, it's another... Um, you know, testament to how important it is to centralize and integrate the right solution so that you're being very strategic, your costs are, are manageable, um, and the process and flow for the end user, i.e. the employer volunteer, is very streamlined. Wow. Awesome. I can't wait to hear about that a little bit later. Let's uh, take a quick break here in the sense that we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and so I'm going to launch this poll question here in just a moment. I think it's this one right here. And you guys should be able to select more than one question. Let me see here. Um, oh, you know what? Which one is showing on the screen for you, Scott? Is it the when do you screen volunteers or the one that's on the slide? I think we had two. Uh, 
when do you screen your volunteers? And then also have the second question, what areas? Okay. I apologize. We didn't have a slide for the first one, so it threw me off. So two questions here we'd love for you to participate in. When do you screen your volunteers for background checks? And don't feel bad if it's just, you know, before they volunteer, because maybe we helped you uh, think outside the box a little bit. Um, and then the second question we'd love to hear from you is what areas of technology are you looking to adopt or replace in the next three months? And there should be some options there for you guys. Um, if one of them is accounting software or I-9, you can go ahead and, and pop that in the, the chat for me. Uh, it looks like some of our answers aren't quite matching the slide there. So we'll give everybody just a few more minutes. I see about maybe half of you have responded. Thank you so much for your answers. All right, I think I think that's all the participants we're gonna get this time around, which is just just fine. Again, thank you so much for oh, a few more people caught in last second. <laughs> Final call. Um, all right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for writing that feedback. This will help us really get to to kind of understand the volunteer space a little bit more as well. So we appreciate you guys participating in that. All right, I am going to now also move over to the live demo. So um, one thing I want to make sure that I kind of make it clear to everybody is when oftentimes when we say the word integrate, we're referring to a very unique type of integration that we have um, with a lot of different organizations and specifically with APS payroll in that it's a, a web browser extension integration. And so what that means is whatever browser you guys are using you can uh, add it on much like you would download an app on your phone, but you're adding this extension to your computer. So let me show you as an example here. Uh, I use Chrome. So I went to the Google Chrome store and searched for verified first. And then when I click that option, I would have this add to Chrome feature here. And it's going to download on my computer within a matter of seconds. Should see that VF icon in your extension toolbar up above and the integration is set up and ready to go. So we did this with, with the intention of it being fast and easy for someone to take advantage of an integration. There doesn't have to be development work. There doesn't have to be time waiting for that development work. We can very well uh, do the traditional API integrations, but um, even when we have the web browser extension and an API integration in a particular platform, a lot of times clients prefer the extension integration. And I think you might see why here when we do the demo. So I hopped into uh, APS Hire, that's the uh, their applicant tracking solution. And you'll see the screen with verified first button. So that'll give confirmation for you that the integration was successful. And obviously you'll need to have an account with verified first in order to start placing the background checks, but you'll know the integration is ready to go. And so I'm gonna choose this place new order option. So as you can see, it's it's popping out from the screen for you. So you're not having to leave uh, APS hire at all in order to do any of the other components to that recruitment process. As I mentioned before, in, in some of those best practices is creating some packages. So that way you can just choose the, the package and all of those searches that are gonna be included in it and you're not having to spend time selecting multiple searches every time, especially during those high volume times when you need a lot of volunteers and you need to get them signed up quickly. We definitely don't want you spending a lot of time clicking a bunch of different boxes for all the additional searches that you're gonna wanna do. And then down further, you can see that it's actually pre-populated some information for you. So it should populate first name, last name, middle name, email, and phone number as long as you have that in APS system. So I'm gonna plug in this uh, middle initial here. And this was, this the intention behind this was so you're not having to spend time doing data entry, uh, risk typing it in incorrectly, and then you're going to have to pay for another background check to get that fixed. Uh, and so we just wanna have it pre-populated for you already. And then to kind of continue on with what we were talking about with, you know, streamlining the process, trying to find a really good way to communicate out to the volunteers or a staff member is we really recommend using the send invite feature because what that will do is you can email the individual a link to say, 
we would like to conduct a background check on you. Please fill out all of the necessary information. You can also send that same link to a phone number that can receive text messages. And then now they can do it on their phone. So definitely it's going to be mobile friendly for them to say, yes, go ahead and do the background check on me. The system will even tell you if it appears that the number can receive background or um, text messages or not. Um, so that way you can go back to the individual and say, hey, I might have typed in your number wrong and I wanted to wanted to send you a text. I'm just going to do the email one for now. Um, but once you say, OK, yes, please send that link off to my potential volunteer. You can also see kind of behind the scenes, I'll X out of this, that that button is acting like a status for you. So you're continuing to do all the things that are needed to get the volunteers in the door and onboarded. You don't have to yet log into the background screening portal again to see where it's at in the process. You know that you're waiting for the applicant or the volunteer to fill out their information. Our platform will even help with the communication and send reminders. Usually it's every 24 hours, but you can customize that time frame. So we'll continue to do the communication for you to remind the individual about the background check and you don't have to send you know, several, several emails to try and get that step done. And then it's also um, going to let you know when the background check is fully completed. You'll get an email as well, but then you can also view that report directly within that integration as well. You'll choose the view report option, see when it got done, and then you can view the entire report as well, all from that extension integration. So you're never having to leave APS payroll. You can still take advantage of all of their functionalities within that platform and simultaneously, can't say that word, simultaneously <laughs> do the background check communications and, and completion as well. There's even some additional features which may not actually pertain to volunteers, but if you are hiring staff, you can take the pre-adverse action, which is letting them know you're they're not going to move forward in the process because of what came up on their background check. So that might be helpful for you as well to, again, lean on the technology to help you do some of those additional pieces in the process. Scott, have you heard any... Um, Feedback, any whether it's good or bad from from clients that you maybe even shown this integration to or heard later on uh, as they started using it. Yeah, there are different types of integrations. Uh, there are different types of background screening providers. It's just what we hear when we show this to prospects or hear from clients is that we've logically figured out the best integration of how you can quickly access a screening. You can go through the checklist and make sure you're getting back what you need. You can search for the, the uh, right criteria. So I guess to summarize, I hear intuitive and I hear easy uh, when, when showing this to prospects and getting feedback from clients. Awesome, great to hear there. I took a peek in the uh, chat and the question section and didn't see anything in there, which is fine. Um, I'll ask some questions that maybe someone didn't think of and went, oh yeah, I wish I would have thought of that or um, didn't maybe didn't necessarily want to ask. But the big, the big kind of elephant in the room question everybody usually likes to know is how much does it cost? Um, and then I unfortunately have to say, I can't give you a price. Um, <laughs> so our pricing model is per service. So all of those individual searches that I talked about and all these different add-ons that you can do and everything, we're going to give you pricing per service. And we want to really make sure that that pricing is going to be the best suited for your organization. So the last thing we want to do is say, these five searches are going to cost this dollar amount for then you to come to us and go, but I don't need that fifth one. I just need these four. And it's like, well, it's these five searches for this dollar amount. We want to make it customized. We want to make it really that's going to fit your needs. Um, we do offer nonprofit pricing as well because we do know that that your budgets are, are super important and a, a little bit tighter than some of those for-profit organizations. Um, so our team would definitely love to work with you and giving you the best competitive pricing that there is. Um, so hopefully if anybody was, was wondering that question, um, there's your not so fun answer, <laughs> not so direct answer, but 
that's that's what it is. Um, another off the question we get often is is kind of how long does it take to get set up with an account? Um, and I'll let Scott kind of answer that for the the APS side, but for the verified first side, um, it, it could take. I'd say on average we can get you up and going in a week. Now that's from you signing the agreement. So there's going to be that time frame of you know, syncing up calendars with the salesperson, finding out what you need, getting getting the agreement over to you. But from the time that you guys actually sign the agreement to getting your ordering portal built to then at least scheduling your first training call, I would say about a week, two weeks tops. Again, it's kind of hard to to match people's calendars up, but um, we like to we like to get our clients sign up signed up quickly, especially if they're in transitioning from one platform to another, there isn't a gap, especially if they need to run a background check quickly on somebody. So Scott, I'm kind of curious if you guys have a, a similar type of turnaround time for getting somebody set up. Are you saying for background screening? Uh, no, for APS payroll. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. What's, what? <laughs> What's um, of course you could probably assume uh, when managing a workforce, clients could use some of our platform, a lot of it, or or all of it, and depending on what they're subscribing to, the timelines can be different. Uh, and we also uh, look at the number of employees and some complexities that our clients have when scoping out their uh, time to go live. So the great um, piece of our implementation. Uh, process is very transparent and visible. So we leverage an application that shows our clients their project plan, their task, all their due dates, and keep them steady on the process uh, to ensure we hit their go live dates. That could be six weeks from kickoff call. It could be eight weeks, just depending on how uh, complex uh, our new client is. All right. That's fair enough. That makes sense too. You want to make sure that you always want to make sure that they get set up correctly right out the gate because that's that's no fun for anybody to have a really yes. poor experience. So I think that's really great that you guys have those kind of little milestone checkpoints to say, we know this is your date. How are we tracking to reach that date? So, yeah, I don't think anyone would say, well, that's an absolute, but most HR directors, CFOs wouldn't say, I want it done the quickest. They're going to say, I want it done the right way. And that's yeah. what we that's what we pride ourselves on. Awesome. Good to know. All right. Well, we do have a few more slides for you guys. So I'm going to hop back over here. So Scott can talk about a little bit more about why companies will choose APS besides what we just touched on with. We're making sure you're making sure that you do it right. That's right. So to really understand why companies choose APS, I think it helps to talk about the current state and what many organizations are facing and why they might be dissatisfied with their current application. And one is decentralization. As I mentioned a minute ago, the average number of systems that are that, that companies use to track workforce force data has doubled since 2020. I think post pandemic, you have a more uh, remote workforce, you have a more diverse workforce, and you also have a lot of software that and technology that's come out that's been more best in breed to manage this one part of the, the workforce cycle, the employee cycle. So companies are using too many systems and their, their data is all over the place. But secondly, there's a problem with adoption. So over a third of HR and finance professionals say that they don't have adequate technology, even though the number of systems that we're using have doubled. And then finally, just overall dissatisfaction. The research shows that over half of software users in the payroll HCM market are planning to make a change in the next two years. So you have companies that are that their data is all over the place, adoption's low, and they're just not happy because of the way it works or how they're supported. So companies choose APS because we help them centralize their data to manage the entire employee lifecycle. We help them ensure system adoption. Um, as you can see, we we recently won highest user adoption on G2. And then we provide personalized support for success. Uh, I'll point to the other G2 batch for best support. So they're coming to us to centralize to get better systems in place. And they want to feel like a, um, a name and not a number. Absolutely. Those are some, some great things to call out as well. Um, 
I have a lot more on the slide and I promise I won't read all of it for you guys, um, but want to make sure that uh, we highlight some things about Verified First as well. Um, I have worked for a payroll company previously and I can tell that APS Payroll does do things in a way that focuses more on their clients than just following the rest of the industry. So some things I do want to call out on this slide as to why companies are choosing Verified First is um, there is no cost to the integration that I showed you. There is actually no cost to any type of integration that we have. It's totally free. We not only want to provide an efficient solution, but one that doesn't mean it's going to cost you extra in order to improve that process. And so uh, speaking of customers as well, which is something that Scott was saying that they're really focusing on, is we average a 97% client satisfaction rating. And I'm sure you hear companies say that all the time. Oh, we have great satisfaction. Clients love us. But we really do care about our clients. Um, not only do we have a client services team that can assist with questions via the phone, email, and even a chat functionality, we uh, also have an account management team that's going to provide an extra level of service to really ensure that companies are happy with us. Yeah, and, and bonus, one of the reasons why we pair with Verified First or partner with Verified First is because they have such a similar philosophy on how their technology works and how their support works. I'm sure you're hearing a lot of uh, similarities. Those of you that are APS customers that uh, caring what your clients think uh, prioritizing satisfaction are critical for us to um, maintain our place in, in the market. Absolutely. Uh, another team that we have is our compliance team. So these are the individuals that are processing the background checks every day, and we process a lot every day. Um, not only are they handling sensitive information that's on a background check, but they do it with little to no reporting errors as well. In addition, we have um, employees or all of the verified first employees rather have been tested through the Professional Background Screening Association or the acronym is PBSA. And um, that means that we're just held to a higher standard when we're handling that sensitive information. And uh, we have also built our ordering portal to have compliance focus in mind as well. So we do things like masking the social security number and date of birth on somebody and um, having different user permissions as well, because we do take compliance very seriously. And then lastly, we do continue to be innovative and competitive to provide features such as text me messaging capabilities, those customized packages, other communication tools to keep the process as seamless as possible as uh, we show you in the, uh, or showed you in the live demo. So also too, just so Scott and myself are not tooting our own horns, we want to show you that there are some uh, happy and mutual clients, happy and satisfied mutual clients here spanning across all various industries that have volunteers. Um, most of these clients have been mutual clients for several years now. Um, one of the individual or one of the companies on this slide, Urological Associates of Savannah, recently provided a quote that said, the integration with my APS hire platform makes it so convenient in order to order the pre-employment testing and background checks with just a few clicks. The support team at Verified First is very helpful and usually handles requests within a couple of hours. The report is concise, easy to follow, and conveniently downloads in a PDF format. I have even been able to add a la carte items such as HEP B and HEP B blood testing as well. So isn't that so great to see and, and hear these types of comments from our clients, Scott? Absolutely. Again, just such a testament to those pillars of logical technology and a wonderful support experience. Absolutely. And so with that, we're on the final slide here. As I mentioned, some contact information on the right-hand side. I do want to call your attention to the left side of the slide, though, with that QR code. So get your phones handy or we will... Uh, We'll be able to share this with you at later, but get your phones handy because that QR code is taking you to a recently published partner case study that we did with APS Payroll. There's some other uh, quotes in there as well, so you can hear from people actually using the uh, both of our systems as well. So um, final reminder, we will get in touch with you right after the, the webinar ends with a post-webinar survey. It should pop up on your screen, so don't step away too quickly. 
Um, and we will be happy to answer any of your questions if you want to contact us via um, email or phone call in case you forgot to ask during the webinar. So thank you again, Scott, for joining us today in the conversation. I, I really appreciate your insights and your willingness to share information, especially in that volunteer space, which I feel like doesn't get as much of a spotlight as maybe some HR topics do. Yeah, absolutely. Always happy to, to join you for these. And I'm, I've got a lot of passion around churches and nonprofits and the, the struggles that they have and how they're trying to manage workforce, uh, both employees and volunteers. So um, if you want to chat in the future about it or if anyone uh, on the line wants to uh, talk about the, the challenges of managing this part of the process, I'm happy to connect. Wonderful. Thank you so much for everybody for attending and sticking around with us. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. Thank you.